Good morning, Hello, lovely people. Um, welcome to um, Yoga Solutions. Um, how are you doing? Oh, uh, Gail, what is my true nature? Discuss. Uh, Alan, side bending and standing. So this is great. I've got loads of questions already. So um, let's see. Uh, Mark, uh, also looking uh, looking at Udayana and the use of the mudras. For those of you that um, you, you can't hear me, Gail, can can anyone hear me? Uh, someone, um, uh, someone else, give me a uh, a thing. Anyone there? Give me a message to let me know whether you can hear me or not. I thought I checked it, um, but uh, yes, okay, Anchor, you can hear me. That's okay. Okay, um, yes, let's see. So what was Mark saying? Yes. Use of uh, sound and working with energy center chakras, looking at Uriyana Banda and the use of mudras, oh my God. <laughs> Inquiry from squat to standing, back bend. Yes, okay, uh, might be a bit uh, side bending and standing. Okay. What is my nature? Discuss. Okay. Um, uh, Gail, uh, hang on, I'll type this in. Um, Gail, there, there is sound. There is sound, apparently. Apparently. If not, um, others. And you let me know. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I'll presume that you're you're hearing me. If otherwise, I'll be distracted with trying to work that out for everyone. Um, so back to topic. Okay. Right, Udayana Banda. Um, it's a it's a yoga name for a particular attitude within the body, and it's around the. Thank you, Alan. It's around the middle of the body. There are different instructions as to how to engage with it. Uh, the word itself means upward flying lock. And it's a kind of a useful attitude to have within the body as you do anything, really. Um, I'm not so keen on the word lock because it, invi it invites a sense of tension. Um, Okay, Gail, um, uh, I, I need to sort of carry, uh, work out your sound. Um, I'd imagine it's just a, there's, there's a button somewhere. Um, I'll carry on with, with uh, teaching in the meantime. Um, yes, so um, it's to do with the uh, organs. It's to do with the organs and the, um, the space within the body. And um, what we, how we organize that space how we organize that space uh, determines whether the spine has to carry our weight or not. Okay. Now, um, as a yoga technique, it works. But um, as, a, as in all things, I, I like to investigate the nature of these um, inverted commas techniques. Because uh, my, my basic idea is that um, all yoga is perfectly natural. <laughs> or it's based on nature because what we are trying to awaken is is natural function uh, and um, natural function is <sighs> what is it mm. what is natural function so that's a good question because because uh, quite often um, what I come across is is um, um, People saying that all oh, that's different from what is natural for me, and what and what I see when they engage with these different things is a sort of perhaps a different occupy occupying of space um, that is perhaps a little more celebratory or a little more whole. Now, whether whether if the person um, let, let's hide that. Um, if the if the person um, if it's not normal for their habitual their, their usual experience, then they will refer to that as um, as not natural. Um, 
I, 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 pre I prefer talking about things being unusual uh, to experience or, or perhaps it's not my normal experience. Um, and these things I'm talking about are becoming my normal experience. So the, and, uh, but the word natural, yes. Anyway, no one, no one actually brought that up. That was, that was um, my own story, really. Um, <clears throat> I was saying, yes, Uri Banda. It's an attitude within the body to do with um, reorganizing this fluid space, the, um, you know, the, the, the organs, the, uh, this, um, this fluid area, which, you know, if you were to carry it in a couple of uh, carrier bags, would weigh a lot. It's, it's most of our weight it lives within this space. And um, I'll stand so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and, you know, if, depending on how you organize yourself, if you, um, the Uddiyana Manda is an attitude within that reorganizes this space. And, and just to uh, make it short and sweet, it's, um, I'll get my taps off. <laughs> That's my usual response. Um, there is this sort of, this heaviness that um, pulls on our spine, that pulls on our uh, muscles, um, and it, it, uh, that when we're used to carrying this weight around, um, the reorganization of the space referred to as Uddiyana Banda, that Mark is talking about, upward flying um, attitude, if you like, um, it's a movement of this fluid. And if you can reorganize the weight of this fluid so it no longer needs to be held up by the spine or sort of held in by the stomach muscles, um, if you can reorganize things so that there is a feeling of an upward uh, arrangement, which would happen as the diaphragm releases the breath anyway, if you're not hanging off your structure, um, if you can reorganize things within, then you have an idea of what Uriana Banda is. And, it, and it's, um, it's a sort of cheerfulness. It's, uh, you know, if, if, you were to, if you were to watch a baby, um, sort of watching, uh, noticing mother arrive and being happy about that fact, there's, a, there's an up, inward and upward feeling that is celebratory that happens inside here. And um, if you can tap into the cheerfulness of this thing, then you, I think you have a more accurate idea of what Uddiyana Banda means. The Uddiyana part is the upward flying. The Banda part is the lock. Now, I would replace the lock with, um, the word lock with um, containment or something. Because once you've reorganized this fluid space, the release of the breath, um, the release of the breath to your touch will help the structure around that space come together. And so what you have is an elongation of the fluid body as a result. Okay, so that's already on a banda. Now to take it into um, some uh, postural stuff, uh, Alan asked about standing and side bending. So let's have a go at that. So if you want to join me, um, make your touch even. So playing with the weight forwards over the fronts of the feet so you can get a bit of lightness because there is a relationship to the use of the feet um, as in walking that would bring you upwards and in space. Um, so the weight forwards over the touch of the inner foot, the outer foot, and then the if you want to rest into your space, then you let the heels drop down away from you over that central space. And the, the, the result of that organization of inner and outer foot and the heels sort of hooking over the central space goes with this sort of central cheerfulness. So the, if I play with the weight forwards, the inside of the foot comes up and this space comes up with it. And then as I release the weight down, the heels can drop away from me uh, with the release of the breath. So the result is there is a, a sort of a, more of a permanent up space in the middle of the feet that goes with the more of a permanent up attitude in the center of this grounded space. 
And what will have changed is the uh, breathing responses within here. So if you can organize that relationship to your touch, um, then you can sort of leave the touch roughly equal as we explore space on one side. So I like to use the expressiveness of the hand. So there's a, if you bring the uh, hand in a sort of a downward prayer position, uh, one hand, um, let's say the right hand, um, and run up through the midline of the body, making contact and sort of allowing the space to travel with you as you go. When you get as far as the heart, just pause for a moment and just check the weight on the feet. Make sure it's equal, uh, front and back, and also side to side. Okay. So you take the weight forwards to get a bit of space, and then you breathe, and then as you release the breath, uh, the heels can drop down away from you, hooking over that central space. It's still happening in here, but it also happens inside the feet. And when you land on the feet, then you have some sort of structural support to rest through. So when they, once the heels have dropped away from you and you've created this central space, you can sort of give yourself to the touch of the heels and allow an upward release away from that touch. If the weight is equal between the feet, then you won't be doing anything to make yourself heavy or um, yes, detach from support. And we're not trying to do stuff to the body. We're not trying to stretch this. What we're trying to do is we're trying to be in a single line of sort of crescent-like support um, through the central channel as we find space to breathe and support around that space that grounds us and leaves us free to fly away from the earth. So the use of the arm helps you engage with space as well because um, the the breath needs to accommodate whatever you're doing so the the contact of the hand on the neck or the throat or the side of the head it's not to stretch it's to meet is to make to be with that contact so you can breathe the contact with space um, comes from the way you decide to express yourself so if you, if you engage with that contact, as if you're using the space on that side of you to find support, if you breathe into it, then you'll be reorganizing things on the inside that in, a, in a useful way. Um, we're not hanging away from space, we're using space for support. So meet the space on the right-hand side if you're, if you're side bending over to the left, and keep the contact with the earth as steadily equal as you can, as you ground, as you breathe, as you release through the heels to release into space, breath by breath. And if each expression of the breath is upward flying through the center, and if your touch remains even as you go, you can gradually open up to a position where you're not really stretching anything, but you feel supported by the heavens above, and you feel the pull of the earth below, creating the space, creating this upward flying space in the middle as you ground around it. So it becomes less and less effortful and more celebratory. Um, I have the advantage of being in my garden, so I can allow myself to sort of be with the, with the space around me a little more than perhaps be with the side bend of what I'm doing. Let's try the other side briefly. I need to do the other side. So take the weight forwards, feel the light, inner lightness that can come up with that as you, as you release the breath with that inner space. Um, you can allow the heels to drop away from the inner space. So you arrive with an upward flying, grounded, central position. And if the feet remain um, equally receiving your weight as you play with this forwards and backwards thing through the arrival and release of the breath. You can use the arriving on your feet to release away from the ground. And the hand travels up the midline and up as far as the throat and neck. When you meet, when you get to this place, uh, start to meet the space on either side of you, um, particularly the side you're hanging away from. 
because we're not trying to stretch, we're trying to find space. And if you meet that space, you'll breathe it. And if you're meeting space and giving to the earth in a rhythmic, <sighs> released way that allows the two directions to be expressed, um, you may arrive in a place where connection to the heavens is enough to support you so that you can release to the earth around the upward flying space. Breath by breath. The clues are equal touch. The clues are what um, an elongation when I release tension away from where I'm in space. And there, there will be a, a sort of centering response that you can recognize as the um, center of your support. So um, I think that'll do. Um, I hope that was useful, Alan. Is that any good? Oh dear, oh dear, there's someone at the door, it's a delivery. I'm gonna have to interrupt my live to go and get something from the door. Uh, one second. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so how, how was that for people? Anyone? Anyone there? Uh, all I've got is Gail saying she can't hear. Alan saying he can. Okay. Well, I, I enjoyed that. And uh, these, these uh, live sessions are only 20 minutes now. Um, Be Live TV have started to charge, um, which means um, if I want to keep it free, I need to keep it to 20 minutes, which is uh, a bit of a challenge for me. But uh, hopefully um, I, I impart some sort of um, um, interesting stuff. So d uh, do drop me um, a comment if uh, anything was useful. <laughs> Good, yeah. Um, I, ho I hope that was of, of use to some of you. Um, I've only got, um, I think I've only got a couple of minutes or so before I, I'll be logged off by, um, by the... Um, uh, the company um yes yeah, so what to say oh i've got my garden yoga week coming up well two of them there's there's one um <laughs> there's there's one um on uh well the next week uh, the first week of august and then there's one i'm having a week off and then another one the third week of august uh come and join me in my lovely garden this is this is it uh, you won't be disappointed and uh, magical things happen in this garden and um so um so do 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 um let me know if you would like to come along and and experience um I, i'm doing morning sessions uh, i think it's ten thirty to 1 uh, which means oh yes next uh, next week's facebook um live will have to be at 10 o'clock so i can fit it in before my teaching um yeah do come along it's uh, in, information is on the website and um i'll be doing uh, getting someone to do some promotion for me on facebook so you can find out more about it um yeah that's me i'm mark j aquaviva i have two minutes left so if you have uh, any comments or suggest or, or uh, anything to say that'd be nice to to hear from you. Um, I'm Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga. Um, that was my Yoga Solutions Live thing. I hope it was useful for, for some of you. Uh, do, do share it if um, you think anyone would get any benefit. And um, yes, I, I, shall, um, I shall see you soon. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, Gail. Thank you, Inquiry. Um, yeah, I'm just going to see what happens because um, my my clock says I've got one minute left, and um, I'm not very good with being having my time restricted like this. Um, so I'll just see what happens when when um, the time the 20 minutes runs out. Maybe they'll be kind and let me continue. But um, yes, your true nature. Yes, uh, how do you find your true nature? Uh, my advice, Gail, is start to listen to your body um, in a different way. Um, uh, the body is hold, holds the wisdom. And wh when you get to um, remove some of your the mind's conflict with it by 
changing relationships just one little thing one to pick one part of your body and start to listen to it like it's your best friend okay start to listen to it like it's your best friend and it needs some attention so you create the conditions for that to be, become possible and within it within it um you might not hear directly but this practice of allowing the body's voice will lead to intuitions landing in you and it may or may not be even the same day but just pick a pick a part of your body and decide to not cause it any conflict that's my suggestion and then see what happens and let go of uh, uh, let go of thinking about it too much okay because uh, the thinking keeps things stuck in place uh, this is what happens for me um, uh, I, in principle, I should be shut down by now, but uh, this is what happens for me is I, I, I don't, you know, I don't, um, I just practice and then uh, somewhere within the practice, sometimes after, the, the, the intuition lands and it's as if it's from elsewhere. Um, I think it's just giving the body time and space to let go. Because the body's tensions are a reflection of the tensions in the thinking. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Um, yes, I want to do more on this uh, on some level. It's uh, quite an involved thing. Um, and I think requires some one-to-one -one attention with people. So um, I'll be looking at how to do this uh, sometime in the near future. Anyway, I think this, that, that's got to be me. Um, thank you. And I shall uh, see you next week at 10 o'clock next week. Okay. And yes, uh, do, do uh, look into the info around the yoga in the garden. It's um, three hour sessions or two and a half hour sessions in the morning. Okay. Come along. Be nice to see you. Namaste and lots of love. Bye.